studio with us today, as always, or uh, most always, like Derek said, we have uh, the Chief of Police for the City of Elgin, Jeff Swoboda. Jeff, thanks for joining us again. Yeah, absolutely. Good morning. Good morning. And um, busy week. Um, good busy, I guess, in a way, right? Kind of tying up some loose ends. I think sometimes we talk about, you know, here in the studio that, you know, this crime happened or this happened or, um, and it's an active investigation and we, we like to try to tie those up as do you, but, you know, we'd like to bring it on air too. Um, so a couple things I wanted to talk about quickly was um, starting off first with kind of social media frenzy around uh, something that we talked about, I think, even just last week. And then you guys put something on Facebook and then a press release went out and then it just kind of steamrolled. And, and then you guys are on television and we got Hollywood Bill Wolf, you know, making yep. an appearance in like a seven piece suit or whatever he was wearing. He looked, he looked sharp. He looked good. Um, so... Um, Let's talk a little bit about the uh, the Craigslist uh, thing where you guys were talking about, you know, hey, the sales, if you guys want somewhere safe to do it, come on down here. It's better than 2 o'clock in the morning in a dark parking lot, you know. No, you're absolutely right on all accounts, including Bill's suit. He's always a, <laughs> such a sharp dresser these days. But, uh, yeah, you know, it was a, an idea that uh, Bill came up with, and it just it really just snowballed. And so we have these incidents that occur every so often, maybe, um, as he said, you know, once a month, but then sometimes it kind of seems to go in waves, might have two or three in a week where people will meet to do some type of transaction and it goes awry. Somebody, you know, somebody was, it was more of a kind of a, a ploy to get somebody there and then a, a robbery happens or a theft from person type of thing. So what, uh, what Bill came up with is said, why don't we just open up our lobby? Let's tell people to come We're to the lobby. Anyway. We're here anyways. We're 24-7. As we stress, you know, the, the building belongs to the people. And so if they want to come in and use their lobby, and um, again, we make it very clear, we're not going to let that interfere with anything we're doing, uh, but it's a big police department, it's a big lobby, or many times if you say, meet me in front of the police station, that's close enough. So um, the idea that Bill had was to uh, tell people, okay, meet there. And if somebody is, both sides should actually be very happy to meet there, but if somebody's a little skeptical or not wanting to it's go there, there red flags in your exactly. head, right? Right. so we're all about trying to just prevent the, those types of uh, crimes from occurring. So we've said, you know, we'll open up our lobby, open up, uh, come to the front steps of the police department. Now we're not going to allow tables and tents to be set up and people to uh, <laughs> it's not a, a, a bizarre. Right, right exactly. Yeah. It's not the, uh, the Kane County Fairgrounds <laughs> or whatever type of thing. But so it was a great idea. And so we started off just small. Christy put something out on Facebook and then it got like 40,000 views and 1,000 likes and people commenting on it left and right. And so then Christy, you know, said, well, we probably should do a, a, an actual press release. So she puts a press release out. That then also snowballs multiple calls from media. Uh, and then that turns into Channel 7 calling and wanting to know more about that. So they come out and uh, and then Bill went on camera and did a nice interview with uh, Channel 7. So right. it turned into a just uh, an all-around, just again, kind of an afterthought by Bill, just thinking about how to prevent a crime from occurring. And it turns into a great idea. And, and he made a mention during the interview that, you know, you don't necessarily have to live in Elgin and... Uh, that got some people, oh, gosh, we don't want yeah, people right, traveling. Right. From, but the hope is that maybe this will spark other cities or, um, you know, people from just at least thinking about where am I, why am I meeting this person at a park at 10 o'clock at night? Even if I don't want to go to the police station, that's good. Meet me at noon, you know, at the big park at someplace else. Right. right. So just getting people to think about. So a great idea. And it just, uh, the power of social media, again, 40,000 people. And then because we had two or three stories on it, probably well more than 50,000 people com or, uh, read it and then multiple people commented on it. So great idea. Yeah, uh, and, and you know the first thing I thought was, in, like you mentioned, was if it's not legitimate, that person is probably not going to agree to meeting at the police station, or the product is stolen. Maybe he is legitimately, or she legitimately going to sell it to you, and it's not a, a, a ruse for just a robbery or a theft to occur, but it might be stolen goods or property. That hey, I'm going to bring these stolen goods into a police department to sell them. Right. Probably not going to do that. <laughs> yeah, you exactly. know. So again. Great awareness around that to just hopefully the public to just ask themselves some deeper questions like, hmm, is this too good to be true? Because as we've saw, said so many times, and you know, it is such a well known thing. If it's too good to be true, guess what? It probably is. Right. You know, if it's a laptop computer and this guy's willing to sell it for $200, hmm. Right, exactly. And, uh, you know, some of the concerns with the front, one of the front desk officers came, you know. Are we going to start? We're not going to get involved in these things, right? And, and you know, we're start. Well, what do you right. think? Officers, this worth two hundred dollars? I don't know. It's damaged over here. Would you? You know, we're not going to. <laughs> You're not going to offer those opinions. And yeah, so uh, no, we, we a lot of things actually happen to the police department, and um, it's probably not a day that goes by where we don't uh, uh, see something or, or people exchanging. Uh, many times, what happens are uh, 
divorced couples will um, who have different visitation and who knows what happened in the past, they will exchange um, the kids at the, at the front of the station. And um, for maybe for ma many reasons, maybe convenience or maybe they, for safety, who yeah, knows, yeah, some, yeah, issues yeah. in the past. But it's, uh, you know, that's what we're there for is, uh, is to help. And again, it's a building that belongs to the people. It's open 24-7, so why not use it for uh, more things that we can help the public with? Um, a couple things that um, we had, I know we talked about on the air because I think it happened just before we came on to do a Friday with the Fuzz, if I remember correctly, um, where there was a car that was stolen and was found in just outside of, um, in Elgin, I guess, but just yes, in the river. right near I-90 in the mm -hmm. river, and there was a car in the water, and who knew what was going on? And we talked about this, I think, last week, that there was um, pretty quickly identified that there was not anybody in the car. Um, and divers went down, and so I'm mean, danger to the public, danger to the divers, obviously. There's so much going on there. Um, you were able to make an arrest with that. Um, a 28-year-old uh, Elgin resident, Jesus Morales. Can you talk a little bit to the arrest that occurred there? Yeah, mostly just that uh, it took a little time, but officers and um, actually specifically our detective unit then working um, with the, uh, the supposed victim who uh, filed the, the police report and uh, working through the story and then corroborating information that uh, we're ultimately able to make an arrest. But as, as you said, some would look at that and say, you know, all right, big deal, the person made up false police report people probably do that regularly but you know you got firefighters going down like you said and you know diving which anytime I would demand I'm not a diver but you know there's dangers inherently uh, involved with that type of activity so from that to the amount of officers that were there tied up doing those things because somebody wanted to, to make this uh, false police report so calling in the false stolen uh, vehicle report and uh, it was a, actually a great arrest by our detective here. Preface this again by saying I know this is an active investigation and it hasn't gone through the courts yet but why would somebody, and I don't even know, maybe you can just speak in generalities, why would he then file this police report? Obviously, he's the one that drove the car. Well, I don't even know, obviously. Was he the one that drove the car into the river? And why? And then why make the, was it an insurance claim that he wanted to? Yeah, those are the kind of things that will come out in court yeah. as far as what the motive was for, for this case. But I can tell you in many other cases where we have, uh, there are times where people have been involved in an accident and uh, they'll take off running maybe they don't have a license or they don't have insurance and so they'll run or they're maybe driving under the influence and so they uh, get out of the scene they're not caught there and one of their first calls is home that oh my gosh I just looked out my window and my car stolen and so they think that that will ultimately then be like oh that the person who stole the car is obviously the one who right now caused the accident. right yeah. oh it wasn't your fault thanks for calling us but no we, d we dive deep into these because it happens far too often and then the people who are the victims in these crashes when it's a crash when person who doesn't have a license, doesn't have insurance, crashes and damages someone else's vehicle. We need to find that person and make the arrest. Hopefully, although it doesn't always happen, that uh, then the person can be held to account and actually at least pay for the damage that they've caused. Just curious of the ulterior motive behind We'll see one. once it comes out as far yeah. as, yeah, once he gets a chance in front of the, the court to determine why that was The done. other um, one that we wanted to tie up was, um, you know, I think most Elgin residents now know, right, the tower building has been condemned. Uh, it's red tagged, and you know, I'm not even sure if there were any businesses left in there anyway. But um, you know, the fire had started uh, May 11th. There was a fire at the building, and now you know, there's cones out there. There's you know, do not cross mm -hmm. lines, and you know, it's kind of sad to see. You know, hopefully, the you know that will be um, rectified, and you know, that building preserved somehow because it is a huge piece of Elgin history. Um, but um, we were able to make an arrest on the individual who started the fire, um, Tommy McBurney, a homeless man, uh, from where I take it, right in Elgin, um, started the fire in a garbage can. And one of the first things, I guess, one of the first officers to arrive noticed that there was broken glass by the front door. So a fire is not just going to happen. Well, I guess it could have, but can you talk to a bit about that, how that case was... Uh, brought about or how the investigation went? Yeah, you know, this one took, uh, again, another uh, great case by our detective bureau, but took some time. Uh, we, there's pretty much in any case that we have, we're always going to be seeing what uh, video is out there. Um, there's many, many different places where uh, you don't realize it, but as you're walking, you know, uh, businesses, you see it all the time on TV, you know, business from inside, uh, a camera from inside the building captures outside on the street. So many times you can see shadows or you can see movement, you can piece together, okay, somebody was walking about this time and then looking at other video to find out, okay, who else was in the area. 
Um, we do that many times with robberies that occur, you know, because sometimes people don't drive straight to that spot to do, do something and then drive straight away. They'll stop somewhere, they're getting up their courage, they may go in, you know, into a nearby bar. I'm not, not for this case, so right. just in general. Yeah. So it just, it's a, it's a lot of it deals with uh, canvassing an area, finding out, A, what cameras are there or what victims, or I'm sorry, what other witnesses may have been there, who else frequents that, the, uh, that area at that time of day, maybe the next day or the next week at that exact same time. People tend out, to be creatures of habit. Exactly, right. Me. I always go here. I, I, I drop my mail at the post office every, you know, whatever night at this time because that's just part of my I habits. I walk to this place for a cup of coffee at walk this time Walk my dog of day, at this right. time. So we do a lot of that. And so sometimes it takes days, if not weeks, to, to get this going. But um, this was one that our, our detective bureau, again, took. And uh, it is. It's an iconic building. It's part of our image, you know, on the... Um, uh, on any of our monikers that we have out the there, you see the, building, right? the city and the suburbs, and, it, and you see the tower building. So it was uh, it was a great arrest as far as um, how he did it and, and the manner and as far as breaking out the windows or getting inside or the motive. Again, that's something that's going to have to come out later. But it is uh, it's take it has taken a few weeks to do, but uh, a fantastic arrest by the uh, the police department. And the police department works very closely on any arsons with the fire department. They have ar arson investigators that also do it. So it's not just the police department; it's police and fire working together on this because. Again, you're finding the origin, um, you know, what accelerant may have been there, how it started, how long ago, based on what is burnt. You can do a lot of uh, examination on that. So and that'll pretty much finish what the arson investigators do, right? I mean, they're not looking to see who started it necessarily. They're looking for the cause and materials used and things like that. And then cause and origin. That's and a big then one. you are working then with the who and the why. Yes, the who and the why, and uh, over the past few years, uh, the fire department has gotten more and more involved in that. They've always been causing okay. And because on these cases, it's always interesting because once you get to a point of maybe a suspect and then interviewing that person, then and the fire is already involved in it. So we've just spent some time, and uh, our detectives work very closely with them. So it's kind of hand in hand because some things are more fire, some things are more police. So uh, kind of put them, team them together, and uh, they work together to put cases like this, um, and hopefully, ultimately, uh, make an arrest. And in this case, they did. Another one I want to talk about, uh, and I know you've got some things, hopefully give you a few minutes here, but um, we did, uh, there was a proclamation, and I know that you were at the service um, where um, Dorothy Schnelly was uh, given a proclamation for um, a kind of a, what was it, a lifelong achievement. Kind of, I, I mean, maybe you can talk to it better about Gordon, uh, who just passed away April 21st. Um, very no, well known around Elgin, and I thought um, some of the things that Anna Muller had said, you know, where she didn't get a chance to meet him, but after reading and hearing stories, she wanted the state to recognize him and for other people to learn of the quote local legend. Yeah, you know, it was a, it was another nice service to honor a man who, again, a World War II um, hero, but even more than that, I think Anna and um, and Senator Nolan both hit on it that uh, really wasn't just what he did in the military, which obviously was was. Beyond something words. right yeah uh, but then when he came back he was just his whole life was in the service of others and I know that's how I met him at the senior services and he was always down there always had a smile on his face and was always helping out when however he could and so um, they did a, uh, a couple proclamations and uh, through the uh, House of Representatives and then also the Senate both uh, passed this and signed off on it and uh, it was just something to uh, kind of um, just remember him and nice plaque uh, or I think it was more of just a framed version of it. Um, two of them that were given to uh, Dorothy, who was sitting there, and was up and around, and it was looking good that she was uh, at least uh, seemed to be much more active. Last time I saw her, I know she was right. a few few yeah. things going on, but she's been uh, she looked great that morning. I was able to talk with her a little bit, but the VFW stepped up and hosted it, and Doc over there set up a very nice, uh, intimate Actually, little event. Yeah. And um, Jeff Myers was there, so those who missed it or uh, who weren't able to be there, I think he'll probably be covering on one of his shows. It's on um, Elgin Cable Channel 17, yep. I believe. Right? Mm -hmm. yep. yep, so they do their, uh, Jeff does that every month, uh, um, sometimes a couple times a month, and he's always with the 4th of July parade, so Jeff Myers, is, everyone knows him, he's everywhere. Oh, yeah. Ask him a question about any year as oh, well, stop. too, the guy yeah, just, his when did Ernie Banks, what was his first game? <laughs> well, it was against the, you know. And he exactly. break into Jeff Myers. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> he's, he's a good guy. Um, you got a couple things you want to talk about. I know you're running a triathlon this weekend. Yeah, big triathlon, my first one this Sunday. So this I've been holding off saying it for a while to make sure I was <laughs> in case you backed out. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully I'll be here next Friday. But yeah, it's my first one. It's not a full. It's not the not an Ironman or anything. Okay. Yet, but it's uh, one down in uh, Batavia. So I'm looking forward to it. So it's uh, 
my first triathlon, so I'm excited. Good luck with that. Thanks. It's supposed to be cold and rainy, so it'll be oh, again, awesome. a great time. <laughs> yeah, we have soccer games that day. So oh, okay. Enjoy. Oh, good. But yeah, a uh, lot of other things going on as far as our torch run. I know for Special Olympics, we did Cop on Top. Anna was here last uh, last week to talk about raised, I think, $3,000. So thank you to the LG community who came out and supported that cause, and they do every year. So, uh, And then statewide, I'm not even sure how much was raised, but a lot. So Cop on Top. And then in addition to that, it's the torch run that's um, also down, uh, I think it's starting in maybe North Aurora. So it's starting up in that area, and that's law enforcement. Um, around Kane County that will uh, do about a five-mile jog. And so that's going on this weekend. And then, uh, lastly, NeighborWorks. Uh, that is going on in the southeast side of Elgin from 8 to 2, and that's where the community comes together. Uh, and um, Elgin Housing Authority, or not Elgin Housing Authority, Elgin, um, oh, boy, losing it. But they're um, they're hosting it, and every year, a couple times a year, actually get together. And I know the police department, uh, we have a team out there. I'll be out there and. Last year we just helped with uh, pulling out some bricks and laying a new sidewalk and uh, many times just planting flowers and, and helping people clean it up. And uh, the different houses, for whatever reason, uh, for people who maybe can't do it themselves. And sometimes it's due to age, sometimes it's due to uh, they're not able to walk out there and walk down the stairs or bend over to plant. So it's just a very nice time for the community to come out and help spruce up some people's homes. And so that'll be going on tomorrow morning from, from 8 to noon. So just a lot of things going on. Next week we're going to talk about Too Hot for Spot. If you haven't got a chance to see that yet, that is uh, uh, Matt Seselznik, who's one of our animal control officers, uh, came up with the idea of uh, putting together a campaign that, hey, it might be, you think it's nice to take your dog with you to the store, but if you get hung up in the store and it gets warm outside, you know, cracking your windows two inches isn't going to do it. And inside a house or inside a car, uh, it could be, you know, 80 degrees outside and seem like it's nice and windy, but within 10, 15 minutes, that 80 degrees can turn into 100 degrees, 110 degrees inside, and your dog can literally um, die from the heat. You know, they're not able to sweat, and so uh, not to mention the stress that it causes them. So it's just, it's not a good idea to be bringing your pets with you to places that they can't be with you all the time. So it's called Two Out for Spot, and uh, we'll, I'm going to be bringing Matt in next week to, uh, to work on it. So it's great. So a bunch of walk and talks going on. Tonight there's another one we'll be at on... Um, not sure where this one was, but earlier in the week we also had one. Uh, Lieutenant Trost had one. Uh, Lieutenant Saganic is hosting one. Each one of the lieutenants do one, uh, and that's where we bring we go out. And uh, my last point was a very nice walk with the mayor that we had over at uh, Willow Lakes. And it had a great showing from uh, the people out at Willow Lakes walking around out there uh, two nights ago, I think it was. So a lot of things going on in the evening, busy, getting busy. out in the neighborhood. Busy, busy. A lot of great stuff going on. And, um, yeah. This is the time to do busy. it. Well, that's right. That's right. And it's 20 out. below zero like yeah. it's been this last winter. We. Yeah, it's, we don't do as many walks in the neighborhood as we do when well, it's nice out. Thanks so. for all that you do for the community. Thanks for being as upfront as you possibly can about everything. You know, like we said, you know, sometimes you know when an investigations happening and you can't talk about it, but we'll ask the questions anyway, and when we can, you know, close it up and tie that loose end together, and we'll talk about it then. So. Absolutely. And then one more thing on uh, how tr trying to be transparent with it is. Uh, uh, working on a Twitter feed, so it's not out yet, but that uh, we're going to be syncing in with uh, our CAD system. So when calls come into the police department, uh, not every call, obviously, yeah. or if it's a, something uh, major in progress or something, uh, we'll, we'll talk more about which calls. But uh, the calls will then go out on a Twitter feed so people can real-time get the accents. Right now, Christy tries to keep up with it by listening to the radio, but uh, as as today, Christy is on vacation, but yet has been updating Facebook all week, is here this morning to uh, put the put the Facebook video on for, of this. So uh, it's a 24 hour operation. Yes. Um, and uh, this will help at least make that a little bit more streamlined in real time. Twitter handle was at Elgin Police. PD. Elgin, Elgin PD. PD. Yep. At Elgin PD. And then uh, your Facebook page is uh, Elgin Police as well, right? I'm yeah, you know, we just broke uh, 5,000 people liking it. And I think we're approaching now 5,500. And so it's a, uh, uh, we're putting a lot of things out there on Facebook. So if you're not, a, uh, a follower, I guess you'd be called, yep. on Facebook uh, for the Elgin Police Department. We're trying Thank to get so. a lot of information out there. It's great. Thank you, Jeff. Have a great weekend. Thanks for having me. You guys do the same. Will do. You're listening to M1410, WRMN. And Elgin.